Before Russia's invasion, one square was an ordinary green lawn in the heart of Ukraine's capital of Kiev. Tourists would visit to take photos, and locals would stroll there on weekends. But 1,000 days of war have transformed it into a makeshift memorial, dotted with blue and yellow flags each honoring a soldier who died fighting Russia. Many were volunteers who left their civilian lives behind to answer the call to defend their country. Their loved ones, left alone with grief, hope their sacrifices won't be forgotten. They plant small, simple flags, hand-marked with the names and dates they died. Over time, the flags have multiplied, fluttering in the wind as the seasons change and the war drags on. I put it so that someone might pass by and see that this person once lived and gave their life for us," said Svetlana Kurichenko, who traveled from Cherkasy to replace the weathered flag she had planted over a year ago in honor of her son, who died fighting. She carefully placed a new one in its place. So we can live peacefully among our own people, and not have Russians dictate how we should live and what to do. Photos from that time show dozens of flags neatly arranged in rows across the grassy field. As the war continued, the place has transformed. The grass has faded away, replaced by well-worn paths resembling those in a cemetery, winding through thousands of flags. Among them, many portraits have appeared, brought by relatives, showing confident, smiling faces in military uniforms. The place is strewn with fresh and dried flowers, a concentration of grief and an epicenter of Ukrainian history. Independence Square, after all, has long been the heart of Ukraine's revolutions. For many, it is the only fitting place for their loved ones to be remembered. City authorities have no control over this memorial. It was created by people themselves, driven by a deep need to honor their fallen in the absence of an official government memorial. Soldiers and families come here to sit for long stretches, gazing quietly into the distance. Nearby, funeral ceremonies take place almost every day, followed by moments of silence. Passers-by stop, kneel and observe in quiet reverence. But soon, life in the capital moves on, returning to its usual pace. The memorial keeps growing with each passing day, a reminder of the price Ukraine pays for its freedom. Так хочеться фотографію поставити. Як же її? Хлопчик, що ти привіси льот був і стоїть прямо красиво. Це дворянь. Ти ранній раз вижив. Третій командировку. Це мій синочок. Колпаковський Ніколай. 28 літ. 26 декабря 23-го року. Він погиб в Старомайорській. Мы родом из Запорожья. Нам его не хватает. Это ужас. Такой парень был хороший, не женат еще был. Ничего после себя не оставил никого. Пусть будь проклята эта война. Ненавижу ее. Для того, щоб хтось хоч пройшов і подивився, що ця людина жила колись і віддала своє життя за всіх нас, щоб ми, ну, розумієте, могли спокійно розмовляти українською мовою, щоб ми були серед своїх, а не вибачте, щоб кацапська морда ходила отут і указувала, що мені робити, як мені жити. Молодина мовчання на Майдані. 
Віталій Філіс, та Олексій Липунов повернулися додому, повернулися на щиті. Вітайте шану кияна. Вони захищали вас і ваші родини. Вони захищали нашу Україну. Вони віддали своє життя за нас з вами. A drone attack was launched on the city of Izhevsk in Russia's Admersha Republic on the morning of November 17, local telegram channels reported. Ukrainian kamikaze drones targeted the Kupol factory in the city. The plant produces TOR anti-aircraft missile complexes, radar stations, and Garpia drones. One of the drones reportedly fell into the territory of the enterprise, as a result of which the windows of one of the workshops were broken. The footage circulated on telegram channels shows an explosion after the drone strike. One person was injured during the incident. The workers of the factory were evacuated. It should be noted that Izhevsk, the capital of the Udmurt Republic, is located 1,200 kilometers from the border with Ukraine.